Good morning, everybody. We're in Brainerd, Minnesota. We're gonna deliver our freight that we picked up in Kenora right away. If you watched yesterday's vlog, you already know what I'm gonna say, and you can go down below to the comment section and say, I already knew. But we're gonna be doing more giveaways, okay? The la last week we did a giveaway with house products, and uh, I asked you to email me. I got hundreds of emails, hundreds of emails. This was good, it was a really good response. Thanks guys for all that. I really do appreciate all of the uh, uh, engagement. That was a lot more than I thought, and my email is still exploding, and my phone is exploding, and I had to turn off the notifications for it because it wouldn't stop. <laughs> That's okay, I'm not complaining. So next time what we're gonna do, because we're gonna do this again, all right? If you didn't get an email back from me, uh, I'm sorry I can't respond to absolutely every email. I only responded to the winner. So if you got an email back from me, you are the winner. And we will arrange how to get that package to you. We're going to do another couple of giveaways yet. We're going to do about five giveaways this month. So in the next week, in the next five or seven days, we're going to do another giveaway. I forgot my house hat at home. Otherwise, I was going to be like, you can see my hat. Obviously, you can't. Bad Josh, don't forget your hat when you go out, all right? If you get one, make sure you wear it everywhere. We're gonna do some house product giveaways, uh, some merch giveaways. In this next giveaway though, I'm gonna get you to leave a comment down below in the description and then I will pin the winning comment. And then I'll get a hold of you and we'll figure out how to get your prize to you. But it's not today, or, may, or, or is it? Maybe it'll be later today, later in this video. You're gonna have to watch the whole thing to find out. So in the next week or so, one of these days, I'm gonna do a giveaway and I want you to respond to that one in the comment section instead of emailing me because that was chaos. My phone, I think it was about to explode. I literally, I think it was, it was getting hot. <laughs> so we're gonna do it a little bit differently this next time, but pay attention. Set your notifications for every single one of my videos. Watch them all the way through because at some point during the video, at some point during this week, we're gonna pick another winner. All right, so stay tuned. Let's go deliver this freight I got behind me. I'll give you a quick look at it before it gets off my trailer. I still have no plans after that. I might just be going home from here and that's okay with me. Uh, Old Blue has a date at the shop. We gotta get some work done to it. I've got a heap of things to do at home. A lot of things packed, stacking up on top of other things. So we're gonna be busy. I just pulled in here to get some coffee. Caribou coffee over there. This is our load. I really need to buy new tarps. I'm gonna have to buy new tarps before winter time. These are, uh, I think they're about to see their last days. It's more patched than tarp already. Man, let's go get this off the trailer. I don't want it anymore. It's really weighing me down. I wanna ask your opinion on something though. I went in there to Caribou Coffee, right, to buy my buy my coffee. It was like uh, oh, a $2 coffee or something like that. And uh, I only, I didn't have cash on me. I only had a card to pay with or whatever. So I'm like, okay, so I'll just pay with card this time. Usually I like to pay with cash, but is his card okay? They said, yeah, all right. So I uh, put my card in and immediately it pops up uh, that it wants a tip or they want a tip from me. Uh, what do you pick, 10, 15 or 20%? I'm like, whoa, 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 I just ordered a coffee. I walked into this, is, I know in America, tipping culture is a little bit more hardcore than in Canada. Canada, there's a big tipping culture as well. But I find it a little bit, this is just my personal opinion, I find it a little bit rude when people ask for a tip, especially on like a dollar fifty or $2 coffee. Um, I understand the people who uh, work in this industry are gonna get very defensive and say, well, we need that to live off of. Maybe they should pay them a living wage. Well, there's that too, but that's a topic for a different channel, different video, but I was kind of taken aback from that because usually when I tip, it's because I was offered exceptional service, they did something above and beyond for me, and I want to reward them for that and say thank you. And say, here's a tip, thank you for the exceptional service. But when I walk into a sit-down restaurant or a sit-down store and I go up to the counter and I order and all they do is turn around and fill up a coffee cup and turn around and put it down for me, I, I don't feel like that's a tipping place. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Am I am I the bad guy here? I just, I... You didn't do anything. You just turned around and you filled up a cup and you put it 
turn back around. Now, if you brought it out to my truck, if I ordered out here, and you brought it out to my truck and handed it to me in my window, absolutely, I'll give you a tip. Thank you very much, above and beyond. But if you're just doing the bare minimum, just filling up a cup and turning around, I feel like asking for a tip is just a little bit rude and presumptuous. And then I feel guilted because I'm in the moment and this thing pops up, tip. And I feel obligated, I, I, gave, I, I gave a tip because I felt obligated, I'd feel bad if I, if I wouldn't now. Now everybody's looking at me and if I'd say no tip, everyone's like, what, what a cheap guy, what a cheap guy, I wouldn't give him a tip. Well, they didn't do anything for a tip. Well, but I gave a tip anyways and now my coffee went from like two, almost 250 to like, I gave a dollar tip, so 250 to 350. That's like a 30% tip, isn't it? And I felt bad. It's just a dollar, but it's a US dollar, so it's like a dollar 30 for me. But let me know, am I the bad guy here? Am I the only one that feels this way? Because don't get me wrong, I absolutely tip. I absolutely tip. I just think that sometimes it gets a little out of control. Like some places you go to, some places you go to some restaurants, I've been to them before, they will automatically add the tip onto your bill without asking. It'll just, gratuity is included. Excuse me? What if you gave me terrible service and I don't want to? <laughs> what if you were rude to me and, and like the food was burnt and everything went wrong and the tip is just automatically added onto my bill? Excuse me? Why don't you just raise the price of your food then, right? But. I'm gonna hold myself back here from going on a rant because I wanna know what your opinion is down below in the comments section because I wanna know if I'm in the wrong here because I, I, I did tip because I felt obligated to and I felt socially pressured to. Is it wrong that they ask for it? Like if there's just a tip jar in front of me and I and I put like a dollar in the tip jar, it's my choice, right? I'm like, thank you for the great service. Here's an extra tip. But if you ask for it, like. let me know down below in the comments section what your opinion is and uh, Maybe I'm in the wrong, I don't, I don't know. But let's see what the most, most of people think. Now, if I'm in the wrong, I'm gonna feel even worse. But don't, don't, don't hold back because I might feel bad, okay? Don't, don't, I, I, I need to know. Asking for a tip. Hmm. All right, okay. Let's go deliver this freight. I want to get it off, off my trailer. I don't want it. It's been there all night already. Let the fresh air in.
we have a reload in Superior, Wisconsin. Headed that way now. According to my app, tells me where all the good prices are. This will be my cheapest fuel to get along my road. We're just at the Casey's in Brainerd. Cheap juice, sign me up. I have an app that tells me where, uh, what all the fuel prices are along my route and what they are uh, on our fleet card. And this is where uh, the deal of the day is today. Fuel here and then we'll probably fuel back in Pemina again on the way back tomorrow. I'm not sure exactly yet what we're picking up tomorrow. Wish I would have remembered my house hat. I like this hat too. This is actually this was a gift from one of you. You know who you are. I still got it. These hats are actually they're so comfortable. I love them. I want more of them. <laughs> but uh, we're going to Superior, Wisconsin, and not too sure what we're loading yet. But all I know is that we're loading first thing tomorrow morning. And that'll take me home. And I'll be able to get home tomorrow. So I'll load first thing tomorrow and we'll be home tomorrow evening. Old Blue's gotta go into the shop the next day. So I'll let them know that it'll be there uh, in the morning. Yeah, cause I'm gonna get there, I gotta clean the truck up. I, I want it to look nice when it goes to the shop. I don't wanna be the guy who brings in a, a dirty truck. Like my truck's not that dirty. It might look a little disorganized. Uh, cause they have all my stuff just laid out, especially in the back there. But uh, the truck itself is, I try to keep clean on the inside, but especially when I take it to a shop, I, I don't always have the time to do that. And sometimes it's a little embarrassing. You bring it there and you know, the floor mats are dirty or something, but uh, I'd like to have it somewhat clean. So when they crawl in here, if, if, if they crawl into a clean truck, chances are they'll respect it a little more. I mean, I would hope that they'd respect the truck regardless, but I know that if I get into a truck that's kept clean, that I have a little bit of extra respect for it and the driver as well. Grab myself a coffee while I was here. <clears throat> Good to go. So the price for me here today, with all conversions into Canadian dollars, was $1.45 per liter. That's compared to just where I came from over the border in Ontario where my price was $1.70 per liter. All conversions included, everything included. So quickly do some math here dollar 70 subtract a dollar 45 25 cents a liter cheaper i bought 435 liters times 435 liters we're looking at i saved 108 dollars and 75 cents canadian by avoiding that wonderful wonderful tax system that is crushing us up north but don't worry Weather's gonna be better. All right, we will get back on to, what is this here? Minnesota 210, and we'll start heading eastbound towards Superior, Wisconsin, just over the bridge from Duluth, Minnesota. It's about a two hour drive or so, something like that. Not too far. A little bit of a better deadhead than the one from PEI to Quebec, right? Or from Brainerd to uh, Nebraska before that. So, uh, not bad.
Last week we were on the other side of this lake, which is Canada, in northern Ontario and Thunder Bay. Now we're checking out this side. This side has a little bit more people. <laughs> Quite a bit more people. The terrain here accommodates development a lot better than the other side. The other side is very rocky. Then again, this is the far west side of the lake, so we're not really right underneath it on the south. That's pretty cool though, coming down the hill and seeing the sights. Being from Manitoba, you know, we never get a, a view like this coming into town. <laughs> Ah, and my ears are popping from the pressure change. You don't get that coming into town either and back home. Two kilometers, take exit 253A, US 2 East, Wisconsin, Richard I. Blum Memorial Bridge. <coughs> so we're going to go across the bridge and our shipper is right there, just over on the other side of the bridge. I'm going to go there and check it out, see where I need to be in the morning get a little feel for the street and the neighborhood, see what direction I need to come at it tomorrow. And then I'm gonna go down the street to the truck stop. I think there's a quick trip and another one about five miles further, further in. One kilometer, take exit 253A, US 2 East, Wisconsin, Richard I. Blum Memorial Bridge. Another paper plant here off to the right. In 600 meters, take exit Lots of 253 paper a, US 2 East, Wisconsin, Richard I. Blum Memorial Bridge. Lots of paper plants in this region. There's one in uh, Dryden, Ontario. There's one in International Falls, Minnesota. One here in Duluth. I wonder if this is where the bulk of like, most paper comes from. I know those paper plants, I, I mention them because you know when you're in a town with a paper plant because they stink. I don't know if this one stinks, but the one in International Falls, the one in Dryden definitely stink. The whole town, you can tell. That's a paper plant. At the roundabout, take the second exit in four kilometers.
then again, you know, there's a lot of other states and provinces in Canada that are also getting very, very friendly with the roundabouts. One kilometer, turn left on Tower Avenue, by 35. Prince Edward Island loves those things. Oh, so we got to go right into the city. Okay. We need to make a left turn, not here. I don't think. Ahead at the next intersection, that's where we want to turn left. Oh, it's starting to smell good in here. My wife made chili. When I was at home, I took some with me. Now that I have a, a fridge that works in here, I'm just heating it up in my little uh, portable oven. Oh, it smells good in here. All right, this is my turn. I gotta turn left here. Oh, this is, uh, this is tight. It's tight. Do it though. This is the road that takes me to my customer. A one kilometer, turn left on North Sixth Street. city. Well, North American standards, old. I love all these old buildings. You can tell that there was a big boom here in the like, 17th, 18th centuries. Or is it 18th, 19th centuries? 1800s, early 1900s, that's what I'm talking about. Here we sit. Just a very short day today. I only drove 120 miles for 200 kilometers. And, uh, just hanging out in the sleeper now. Gonna get some videos done. I gotta be up in... 12 hours that'll give me an hour to get ready for for the day and get five minutes down the road I went and checked out their location there already and stopped in there figured out where I need to go and everything where I need to park and then I came out here with a truck stop it's the quick trip just down the street on the uh, east side of town just gonna sleep here and be ready to go in the morning I don't even know what I'm loading I have I rarely do know. I don't really care what it is as long as it's legal. <laughs> you can put it on my trailer, I'll tie it down. I got all the equipment I could possibly need for anything they could throw at me. So, bring it on, is what I say. Thanks for hanging out with me today on this short day. Tomorrow we'll get loaded up and head towards the house and bring old Blue to the shop. Need some love and attention from someone other than me. I could do the service myself. But like I said before, when I'm at home, I want to be at home. I don't want to spend the entire time I have at home working on the truck. Now, sometimes it's necessary. I have to do that. And I understand you save a lot of money doing that. It's very expensive to get other people to work on your truck. Labor is very expensive. But I think that time with family at home is worth it. And my time is worth that. So I get other people to work on it when I'm at home. I fix the things I, I can while I'm on the road, but I just need to know that someone else is gonna look it over. You know, they catch things that I don't catch, that I don't see. It's nice to have a professional go over my whole truck front to back and just make sure everything is as it should be. Nothing's wearing out too fast. Plus I wanna get a couple of quotes and some other things like I've been saying. And I want them to check my frame out as well. It's getting a little bit rusty in the back. I'll show you tomorrow. But uh, the frame needs to be painted. So when the frame gets stretched, I'm also going to get it painted. Like sanded and painted at the, the same time. So lots of work ahead in the future. 
lots to do always so everybody you stay safe out there you be safe and you drive safe